Sir Benjamin Thompson was my kind of guy. He lived from 1753 to 1814. There he is right there. Again, this is in my scientists and inventors book. Go ahead and read this out and then I'll do a quick synopsis of the other page. Benjamin Thompson, who became Count Rumford on the basis of his work as a government, bleh, government, a government official in Bavaria, formulated the first modern theory of heat. His investigations overturned the existing idea of heat as a kind of fluid contained by substances, showing it to be a form of motion instead. He also established that mechanical energy could be converted into heat, paving the way for the development of the science of thermodynamics and the invention of the first heat engines, meaning, you know, internal combustion engines and steam engines. His results mathematically were wildly inaccurate concerning heat, but he's the first one to really do this. The way he did it was when he was responsible uh, as an employee and being the elector of Bavaria and in terms of the armaments, you know, making weapons and things like that, he noticed that when they were manufacturing cannon barrels, they start with a big block of metal and they would drill it out, that they had to routinely take the cannon barrel and dip it in water to cool it down. And the modern scientific explanation, the conventional standard scientific explanation for that was that the drill was releasing a fluid called caloric from the metal and showed itself as heat in the atmosphere and Thompson he realized that the mechanical action of the drill was causing the heat which in turn led him to the idea that heat is a form of motion and that in itself is incredibly important with thermodynamics. It's the beginning of thermodynamics, basically. Sir Benjamin Thompson helped uh, figure that one out. And here it shows one of the barrels on a lathe being drilled out from the metal. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, there it is. And he also had uh, a different kind of kettle. Oh, okay, here's a here's a larger real real picture of it. Here's a person turning a lathe. I don't know if you can catch that. But basically the drill would get hot and Oh wait, he wasn't drilling. This is the this is the horses underneath that were that were providing the power. Look at that. Alright. But uh basically his life, he was born in Welburn, Massachusetts. So, uh, you know, the American, the colonies were there, but they weren't actually states yet. And the American Revolution broke out, and, you know, he, uh, he sided with the British, leaving his wife and child, and went to England to work as a government official. The victory for the American Revolutionary Forces meant that, you know, he couldn't return, so he reconciled himself to the life of an exile. I mean, if he would have just, you know, stayed put, he would live here. But, uh, he decided to side with the British. And, uh, the rest of history was made because all of his work was done over in Europe. But anyways found that a bit to be a bit interesting <laughs> it's not it's not every day that you hear about a guy that actually sided with the British It's a very important scientific discoverer that was born in basically the United States well it wasn't the United States yet but you get the point I suggest reading more about this individual and looking at a lot of the ways that he was theorizing these things and some of the gold that's in here can be found in simple experiments in the ideals that these people had as they were doing these experiments. And notice, I wanted to draw attention to some people here. I know gravitation is a bit of a 
mystery still. But notice how they had heat as being something that left the metal as caloric content and it manifested as heat. So they tried to make it into a physical thing right off the bat. But what was happening it was that it was the motion of the drill bit, the friction that was causing the heat. Now, when I look at gravitation, early scientists and early uh, theorizers such as Einstein and such wanted to make gravitation as a physical thing right off the bat. It was physical space-time warping. But that's similar to the problem that they had with caloric content leaving an object. There is no space-time warping. I think what gravitation is, is a form of heat. So, if we can just find some similarities with Thompson's work, and find in the late 1800s uh, where we went, you know, the wrong direction, maybe we can figure out what this gravitation thing is, and I think thermodynamics has something to do with it. But uh, if you can just relate it to heat and motion somehow, I think that's I think that's what the future is. But uh, as you can see here, there are a lot of there are a lot of other people that I can talk about. But I just chose this gentleman because, well, thermodynamics is pretty damn important. Today is June seventeenth, uh, twenty fifteen.